Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. Almost every site needs a contact form, and new WordPress users must each figure out which of the many options they should use. I call this a WordPress fire drill, and it's repeated hundreds or thousands of times every day. I really think that a contact form should be built into WordPress core, but until then you might want to consider the Cadence form block. Yes, for something as simple as a contact or email signup form, you can use Gutenberg along with Cadence Blocks and don't need a dedicated forms plugin. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the Cadence form block and walk through the steps for creating a contact form. The good news is that you can get a basic contact form up and running using the free version of Cadence Blocks, though the premium version adds more features. The free version of Cadence Blocks is available from the WordPress plugin directory. I've got a test site here using the Cadence theme. And if we go in and take a look at the plugins, we'll see that I have the free version of Cadence Blocks installed. And I have the pro version, but it's not activated. I'll activate it later on in the video. When you install the free version, you get a settings menu for Cadence Blocks off of the main settings menu. Here it has a page where you can deactivate any of the blocks that come with Cadence that you decide you don't want to use. And the ability to activate, deactivate blocks I think is a hallmark of some of the better add-ons because you're not loading those styles and resources and you're not cluttering up the Gutenberg editor with blocks that you're not going to use. So the free version of Cadence comes with a row layout block, which I've done a video on that. And then the form block, which is what we're looking at in this video. Then there's an advanced gallery, advanced button, an icon, a spacer divider, advanced heading, tabs, info box, accordion, icon list and testimonials block. So here we are on our test site and we're going to need a contact form just like every other WordPress site. So I go to create a new page. We'll name it contact us and I'm just going to save it here and we'll add a little blurb at the beginning. Okay, and now we want to enter our contact form. We'll go here to the list of blocks, and here are Cadence blocks, and here's the form block. So I'm going to insert that. And so as soon as you insert it, you get a basic contact form right there. Let's look at some of the features that come with that. First, there are the settings for the different fields. So for the name field, here are the settings. And you can choose from different field types. There's text, email, text area, accept, select, telephone, checkboxes, and radio button. So we want this one to be text. I'd like for it to be required. And so it adds the indicator there that it's required. You can change the label. You have the option to show or hide the label. To have a placeholder, an input default, help text. And there's this interesting autofill option. And this is a list of fields from the user profile. I have WooCommerce installed, so it has the address fields there. So you could use this for a form, and if the user was logged in, it would pull that information and automatically fill it out based on the information in their user profile. And then there's a column width option, and you can adjust that by device size. So the email settings and the message settings for these fields, those are the same. You can add a field. It's the same field types that we just looked at. Then there are options of what to do after the form is submitted. You can email the form, which is the usual thing. Email it. Like if it's your site, it'll email you. And there's the option to have a redirection when the form is submitted to take the user to another page, maybe a thank you page or an offer or something. There's the option to send an auto response, that is to send a copy of the form submission to the user. And there's the option to save the form into the database. The auto respond and the database entry are pro features and we'll look at those in a few minutes. When you add the redirect, you get a panel here for redirect settings. 
and here you can paste in the URL to the page that you want them to go to. One thing I should say here before going on is WordPress is notorious for losing emails, for not sending emails. And so you're going to want to use an SMTP plugin to make your email sending more reliable. So here's one, for instance, that I've used and gets pretty good reviews. But there are a number of them in the WordPress plugin directory. You can search and find one that you like that works well for you. Then there are email settings. These are the defaults that are going to be in the email. So I have it david at sitepest.com. And, and, then, and then you can have the reply be to the email field, which would make sense. But you can also have it from the from email. And then a carbon copy or blind carbon copy. And the option whether to send it as an HTML email or as just plain text. Then there's a basic spam check. And what this does is it puts a hidden form field in and bots sometimes fill that out. And since it's hidden and shouldn't be filled out, when you submit the form, it can check. And if it has a value, then that's an indicator that a bot filled out the form. Then there's the option for Google reCAPTCHA. And it's kind of nice. You can use version two or version three. It's free. And there's a link here to sign up to get the keys to use it or for a help doc. And you'd enter in your site key and your secret key and save them here. So it's nice that you have this. I'm a little surprised that these settings are included as part of the form because often they're set kind of in a central place in the WordPress admin and having them as a part of the form would mean that if you had more than one form on the site, then you'd have to fill these in each time. Not a big deal, but I was just a little surprised at that. Then there are options for field styles. There are a ton of options here. And these style controls and layout and sizing and everything, they are also adjustable by device size. So you have font size, line height, the input size, and this little gear icon here for settings is for custom padding. Then you have options for the normal look of the fields or for when the field has focus. So let's try saying that the normally the field will have that color and the width will be one. But when the user clicks on it and the field has focus, we'd like to change the color of the border and change the border width. That way you'd have kind of a glow effect or something. But you see, even though we're on focus, we go back to normal, it's applied the same setting. So there's a little glitch here and I've reported that and I expect that it'll be fixed soon. So we'll just set this back for now. But then you have options for border radius for the gaps and whatnot. Then for the label styles, these labels here, again, quite a few settings. You have color, show if it's required or not the change the color for the required, the sizing, then there are advanced label settings. And here we have letter, spacing, text transform, font family, padding, margin, and so on. So quite a few styling options there as well. And now you have button styles. So you have some default button sizes and some width options. Again, you can customize if you don't like these, you can kind of customize your own. There's normal and hover options. We'll make the color, which is I think the text, we'll make that blue. We'll make the background white and we'll make the border blue and we'll give it a border width of two. There's our submit button and here are some size controls and there are advanced button options also. Same kind of thing, letter spacing, text transform, font options, some margin options by device size. Also with a lot of these, you have the option to choose which unit of measure, CSS unit you're gonna use. Some people like to use M's or rims or base it on the view height. Then there are message settings, and this is what the user sees when they submit the form, like a success message. Here, you can customize that. 
can customize the colors and then the error message and customize those colors and the size and border and again there are advanced settings here as well so with each of these there are a ton of styling options you can set them by different device sizes finally there's an advanced area and you can put it in an html anchor and so this would be nice if you're using, say, creating a one-page website and you want to have a contact form on it. You could add an anchor and then put contact in your menu and it would jump to that place on the page. And you can add additional CSS classes. So let's save this and let's go and preview it. And this is what it looks like, your basic contact form. So you see, that was really easy. It took a lot longer to go through and look at these options than it would for you to create a contact form. Okay, so now let's go take a look at what the Pro version offers. I'm going to activate it. And when you do that, you see that the menu for Cadence Black was moved out of the settings area, and now it has its own top-level menu. If we look at the settings, we have the same thing we had before, a list of all the blocks and you can deactivate them. Of course, now you also have the blocks that come with the pro version. There's a place for form entries. We'll come back here in a minute. And then there's the option for custom icons. So let's go back to our contact page. And what's new here? We didn't get any new fields. But when we look at actions after submit, now we have the email auto response option. That's nice to send the user a copy of the email. And I think of this as almost a requirement because it's so easy to lose an email or have it go in spam. So it's nice to have a record of form submissions of when people tried to contact you. And then there's the option to add the user to send in Blue or MailChimp. So you would use these if you were, say, creating an email sign-up form for a newsletter or something. These settings are the same, but we have the option here for animate on scroll, which is new. So if you had contact form embedded in a longer page, when you scroll down and it came into view, the animation would be triggered. And you can see there's a pretty long list of them here. And there are some auto response settings. So just like with the email settings, here you can customize what is going to appear in the auto response email. And then there are entry settings. And here you can name the form. So you call it, I guess, your contact form. And you can save the user IP address and the device information or not, as you like. So I'm gonna update the form now. And let's go and view the page, and we'll try filling it out. We'll submit it, and here's the success message. And you can customize this how you want. This is the default. This is what that email looks like in Thunderbird. And if we go to the back end, and we go to form entries, here's a copy of what was just submitted so that you have a record of the form submissions. So in summary and conclusion, if all you need on your site is a basic contact form, then the free version of Cadence Blocks might save you from needing to install a separate forms plugin. As we saw, there are a ton of styling options, so you can get it looking the way you want. The pro version adds the additional options for after the form is submitted and the option to send a copy to the user, which is a nice touch. And I really like the ability to save the form submission in the database. And the animations that come with the pro version are a nice extra. I did run into the one small bug with the field styling, but I don't think that's a big thing and I imagine it'll be easily fixed. In general, I think there are two places where people might find a limitation. First, only MailChimp and SendInBlue options are available for list signup. For email signups, the form block is only useful if you're using one of those two. Second, the Cadence form block is good for simple forms, but it's not a full-fledged form option. There are no conditional fields, multi-step forms, or other advanced features. And that's fine. There's no reason to try and stuff a full forms plugin into a Gutenberg block, but just be aware of what it provides. 
Finally, setting up a contact form was very easy and pretty intuitive. I've been pleased with Cadence Blocks and I used the form block myself on one of my sites for the contact form. So, until WordPress adds a contact form to Core, this is a good option. So that's my look at the Cadence form block. There's a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs and reviews and resources. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.